Hey, what's up guys? It's Mr. English here and today I want to teach you a trick uh, to get your audio from sounding like this to sounding like this. Here we go. Now, um, you're probably wondering like, damn, what did he just do with his microphone or what did he do with his voice? It's really simple actually. Um, I figured it out um, on the fly messing with Adobe Audition and uh, basically what I want to teach you today is how to uh, get the most out of your microphone that you're using currently um, whether you know no matter what it is um, right now I'm using a Rode Podcaster to uh, to do all my live streams and, and uh, stuff like that gameplay and basically what this does is going to use a W Audition and it's going to use a plugin or software extra software to be able to create a separate virtual microphone so um, right away you're probably wondering like damn this looks very very confusing um, but it's really really simple so what you want to do first is start off by going when you open Adobe Audition it's not gonna look like mine so when you open Adobe Audition you're gonna start off with um, creating a new multi-track session <clears throat> once you click that it'll pop up box will pop up you'll name it I've named mine podcast preference and uh, basically what you're gonna do is it's gonna open up the uh, it's gonna open it up so you're gonna highlight the first thing you want to do in setting this up is you want to highlight track number one see uh, and the hot to highlight it basically all you gotta do is click on it once you highlight it uh, once you highlight track one you want to go to edit uh, go down to preferences and you're going to select audio hardware and this screen what you're basically gonna see um, this is what you're gonna see you should see whatever microphone you're using here in the default input you want to pick whatever microphone that you want to use or that you're currently using to be here in default input uh, the second selection that you'll see is default output now I want you to pause here or listen to what I'm saying before you change anything before you get when you get to this step go ahead and stop I want you to go ahead and get over into your uh, your web browser and I want you to type in VB dash audio in Google what this is gonna do is gonna help you find the VB audio uh, website once you find the website you're going to navigate so it's gonna take you Obviously, it's going to take you here, but um, you want to go to audio apps. It's going to take you to the home site, which is like this. Obviously, you want to head up to audio apps, click on that, and then right here at the very top, you're going to see VB Audio Virtual Cable. Right? This is what you want. <laughs> you want the, the virtual cable. So if you slide down a little bit, you'll see VB Cable and Hi Fi Cable this is what you want you want the VB cable technology slide back down again and you will see the download driver here VB virtual cable download there once you download it it's really really easy it'll take you through all the steps to, in, uh, to install it once you install it head back over to Adobe Audition which is here um, you might have to refresh the page so let's go ahead and refresh it click on track one go to edit hit preferences head to audio hardware and then now what you should see it should automatically be um, there for you if it's not go to default output and manually select cable input VB audio virtual cable that's what you want the master clock should also reflect the same thing uh, VB audio virtual cable put your latency to 100 and whatever this is at your sample rate it's it's based off of your computer settings and, and whatnot it's gonna work at whatever speed that it's best for your computer so don't worry about changing that yours may say 44 one mine says 48 and uh, so don't worry about that you want to make sure that this box right here is checked use machine specific device defaults once you go there you are hit OK and uh, that's step one. Step two, you're gonna go ahead back over here to track one, and you're going to click on 
your first one, which is here, your input. Now, um, for your input, you're going to actually select the microphone that you're using. Mine says Rode uh, Podcaster. So that's the one that I chose, Rode Podcaster 1. And for the uh, output, you're going to click Input Cable, your VB Audio Virtual Cable. This is what you want for your output. Once you're done doing that, Oh, also, let me go ahead, I forgot to say, I use stereo, so I went to stereo, and then chose VB Audio. Um, you want stereo. Sorry about that. So, from there, once you go there, this left side right here, there should be nothing in there for you. Uh, this is under effects rack, effects rack. Uh, you should have nothing there yet. So basically what you're going to do is, on number one, you're going to click... You're going to go to amplitude compression and you're going to find single band compressor all right you click on that i'm going to go to edit since it's already there and this is if you want to use my settings i suggest it um just to, as a preliminary to start you off right and then you can go back and adjust everything later go ahead and pause the video check out all the uh you know the the values that i have on here uh, your threshold is going to be at negative 25 uh, dB. Your ratio is going to be at 20. Uh, your attack should be at 0, 0.0. Release should be at 200 milliseconds. And your output gain should be at 12 dB. Once you adjusted all those settings, go up here, click on the X. Now you're going to go to the next one. If you see the next one, I had chorus on there. I didn't like the way the chorus doubled my voice, so I, I took it off. But um, basically, we're inputting all of the ones that we want to correct our voice to make the voice uh, the final output. So this is what I did. I'm just going to take on the ones that I have activated because I messed around with them a lot until I found what I liked. So the next one you would like to go to, um, we're going to go to adaptive noise reduction. And I believe that is under noise reduction uh, and restoration. So go there, click on adaptive noise reduction. Once you get in there, take a look at my settings, pause the video. Um, if you'd like, reduce noise by 30 decibels. Noisiness, three, uh, 30%. Fine-tuned noise floor, it's going to be 7.83%, I mean decibels. Fine-tuned noise floor is going to be 7.83 decibels. Your, single, uh, your signal threshold is going to be at 9.59 decibels. Uh, special decay rate is going to be at 284.65 milliseconds uh, divided by 60 decibels. And your band... Um, <coughs> And your broadband preservation is going to be at 194.7.70 decibels. Make sure you have the high quality mode checked. Once you're done with that, exit. Go down to the next one and we're going to go to a multi-band compressor, which I believe is under amplitude. Yes. Uh, amplitude and compression. You're going to hit multi-band compressor. Once you get here, um, you're kind of free to, uh, depending on the type of voice you have, um, you're going to be, able, you're going to have to uh, adjust it how you will. Uh, personally, I like a lot. I like some bass in my voice, and that's what I love about like Blue Yetis. Uh, if you're coming from a Blue Yeti, ye blah, blah, blah. if you're coming from a Blue Yeti or you're using a Blue Yeti, you may not want to enhance uh, the lows in your voice since it's already got uh, a very bassy, uh, throaty kind of a uh, pitch to it in those microphones. But for me, uh, in this Rode Podcaster, it, it tends to um, favor the highs and mids more. So I wanted to enhance my lows. And if you go down on the presets, if you if you click enhance lows, it will definitely do that for you. It'll give you a nice, uh, a nice little uh, throaty sound, and you can adjust it from there. This, but this window here, you can come in here and, and literally adjust it how you please. But go on off the preset. I would use the presets first and then adjust from there. So once you have that one chosen, 
um, you can kind of decide how you want, uh, if you're loud enough or if you're not loud enough. If you feel like your voice is already loud enough, uh, you can skip amplify. Um, but if you want to amplify your voice and just to raise the octane just a little bit higher, go ahead and click on, uh, on amplify there. So if you want to raise your voice just a little bit higher, go ahead and click on ampl uh, on the uh, thing, amplitude and compression. Click on amplify. Once you get there, you can adjust it how you want it. As you can see, I have mine set at negative 20, and um, that's just because when I'm using OBS or uh, anything like that, um, I don't want the level too high to where it's like crashing in the reds. So I adjust mine how I please so if you want to skip amplify we're gonna go back down and you're gonna to go to the next uh, the next available rack and you're gonna hit and we're gonna search for studio reverb and under reverb you have studio reverb once you click on that it'll bring up this uh, this little menu here and if you want to go ahead and pause and take a look at my values i'm going to start from the top and as you can see i use custom i didn't use a preset uh, i started off with the preset actually i didn't start off with preset. i just all i did was custom customize it so this took a little bit of work trying to find my, my groove what i liked and what it didn't like so decay as you can see i have 500 milliseconds early reflections 30 percent on the width 40 high frequency cut at 14,001 megahertz, uh, not megahertz, sorry, hertz. <laughs> so 14,001 or 14001. Low frequency cut, 600 hertz. Damping, 40%. Diffusion, 20%. And down here on the output level, I have my dry, 100%. And that's so I want a dry, bassy voice uh, with uh, a dry bass. Uh, when you say wet, wet kind of makes it sound like almost like an echo, like a chorus kind of kind of thing. And I don't like that. So you may like that, but if you want to just start off here and adjust it as you please, go ahead. On the wet, I actually turned it down to 3.2% and was happy with that. Once you're done, click the X and as you see, I have dynamic processing there. If you want to add an extra bass to your voice, you can. Um, messing with the dynamic processing, I would. Uh, I'm not gonna. I would advise against it uh, to double up. You don't want. It didn't sound right when I had the dynamic processing um, doubled with the. Um, excuse me. With the uh, the multiband compressor, it didn't sound right to me, so I took it off. As you can see, it's not highlighted, but. What I did go and do was add, for more bass, what I did go do is I went and added another, um, I, so if you go down, you'll see that I went and got another multiband compressor. Uh, basically what I did was, I'll go there if you click on it, um, go to amplitude compression again, hit multiband compressor. I wanted more bass in my voice and I didn't like the way the dynamic processing added the bass. So all I went and did was added an extra enhanced lows um, or an extra multi compressor, multiband compressor. So I doubled up on the enhanced lows and I adjusted my, um, my settings as per how I liked it and basically what that does is it stacks it and I was I'm fine with that I like that and that was enough for me as you can see I have 16 slots to add stuff here you don't need 16 slots to do it and this is the outcome so I will let you hear again uh, the difference this is with the uh, preset track off your custom effects off um, and this is back with it on so as you can see it makes a big difference and um, I really think that 
it kind of enhance you can use this to enhance your voice as far as like uh if you're looking for more quality out of your microphone uh, or whether or not you just want to kind of change your sound a little bit uh, i think it helps anybody and definitely definitely is a plus in my book after you're done with this you can obviously go and save the uh the session as whatever you want it like i said in the beginning i saved mine as podcast preference and once you're done saving that all you have to remember is whenever you're using any program for instance i'm gonna pull up obs so you can see it when i have obs up i'm gonna go to settings and you're gonna go to audio now if you notice right here under microphone slash auxiliary audio device my device is the virtual the vb audio virtual cable do not forget to choose your virtual audio uh your virtual cable your vb audio cable don't forget to choose that if you have it set on default or your mic or your regular microphone you're not it's not going to work you're not going to hear it and this goes with any device i mean with any program that you use whether it's skype google hangouts always choose the virtual cable don't choose anything else or it's not going to work um and then the other catch to this is you obviously have to have adobe audition running at the same time so usually when you don't see when i'm doing my gameplays i just have it minimized to the tray it doesn't use that many resources so hopefully you have a decent computer to where when you do have it up it's not using a lot of your uh your, your computer resources uh that can slow your computer down but this is the walk around that i found that works for me um like i said there's endless possibilities here to make to to get the perfect sound that you want I just wanted to basically give you a baseline uh, to go uh, to start from and like I said I'm definitely liking liking this it's it's, it's giving me a, a reason not to go purchase another microphone <laughs> and um, and work with what I have and to tweak what I have uh, to suit me better and um, I really 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 enjoy it and I hope you enjoyed this video if you do like this video make sure you like comment and subscribe and um, give a thumbs up, a quick comment, and uh, subscribe to the channel if you like. And uh, I will catch you guys in the next video. Hope you enjoyed this. Peace.